There's this funny paradox about consciousness, that even though it is what we are, even though it is here, right now, in the midst of every life experience, at the same time, it is a complete mystery. Perhaps the only thing that we can know beyond a shadow of a doubt is that we are conscious. Some experience of life is happening, but at the same time, our most cutting edge science has no way to even begin explaining why we are conscious or what consciousness is. How is it that some neurons firing in our brain creates this incredible inner experience of the entire universe? This rich, vivid inner movie where love feels like love, pain feels like pain, and a sunset looks like a sunset. Why isn't all this brain activity just happening in the dark with no one here to perceive it? If consciousness emerges from patterns of electrical activity in your brain and mine, as most materialists would assume, uh, the sun has vastly more complex patterns of electrical activity than our brains. So why shouldn't that be associated with consciousness? Why shouldn't the sun have a mind? It's kind of strange to talk about the sun being conscious, <laughs> but this clearly illustrates that even as we get some understanding of how the brain functions, we still don't have even the vaguest idea of how that creates this inner experience of life. And this is what philosophers and scientists call the hard problem of consciousness. The nature of consciousness is such that most neuroscientists say it's a product of the brain and the brain is an accident of evolution uh, and consciousness is therefore something wonderful that we enjoy, but it's really an accident that appears on planet Earth during this period of time. And it is a belief system. I have to say that that viewpoint that you just very profoundly put together uh, is, which is belief system of neuroscience, it's a belief system. There's actually no way of proving that. The more we know about the physical brain, the more we realize it's not the creator of consciousness. It's very clearly related to consciousness. But again, that it's important to see um, that uh, it's, it's more of a reducing valve or filter. Many honest scientists should admit that consciousness is the greatest mystery of science. And, and that we don't know exactly how it works. The brain's involved in it in some way, but we're not sure how. Could be that the brain generates consciousness the way a generator makes electricity. If you hold to that paradigm, then, then of course you can't believe in life after death. When the generator's broken, consciousness is gone. But it's equally possible that the relationship, and nothing in neuroscience rules it out, that the relationship is more like the relationship of the TV signal to the TV set. And in that case, when the TV set is broken, of course the TV signal continues. Physicists sometimes take some aspects of the universe as fundamental building blocks, space and time and mass. If you can't explain consciousness in terms of the existing fundamentals, space, time, mass, charge, then as a matter of logic, you need to expand the list. The natural thing to do is to postulate consciousness itself as something fundamental, a fundamental building block of nature. This perspective that consciousness exists beyond the brain as a fundamental force, fundamental reality, is not just some theoretical idea. Actually, all of our scientific advancements on the cutting edge of both neuroscience and quantum physics are pointing to this conclusion, that consciousness exists beyond the brain, beyond this human lifetime, and ultimately beyond this universe. The more that we learn about quantum physics, the more that we see that this is an inescapable conclusion. Consciousness can enter quantum physics to collapse the possibilities into actuality only if, now listen to this, consciousness is transcendent, consciousness is unitive, one consciousness only, and consciousness is us. We are that consciousness. Mm -hmm. And this is a fairly spiritual view of the world. In other words, quantum physics enables us to uh, see directly that we can make sense of the world only if we base the world on consciousness. Qu quantum physics makes this as clear as daylight. If we understand this model of quantum physics, then it, it becomes apparent that uh, we are not in the physical world. The physical world is in us. We create the physical world in the, uh, when we perceive it, when we observe it. And when I say we, I don't mean the physical body or the brain, but that deeper domain of consciousness 
which conceives, governs, constructs, and actually becomes everything that we call physical reality. And for me, there can't even have been an origin of the universe unless there was some consciousness there to perceive it coming into being. This is a lesson that all physicists eventually are coming to. Consciousness must enter into the field mm -hmm. of physics in a direct way through something called the observer effect. You observe an atomic system, and the atomic system changes from a, a field of possibilities into something that's solid and physical and real and right there in front of your eyes. This is a, this is a fact of physics that we have to deal with. If the Big Bang occurred out of nothing, uh, and produced a material universe, then there had to have been quantum mechanics operating at the moment of the Big Bang, and that, meant, that means there, has to, there had to have been an observer present, and this is where I bring in the whole question of the soul. Now we've gotten to the heart of the, of yes. the matter. You've, you've really laid it out very nicely, the, what is probably the major controversy, the major theoretical problem in uh, science at the, uh, the 20th century and the 21st century right there. The quantum soul. This may be scientifically uh, feasible. Here's a picture of uh, an out-of-body experience. I work in medicine and anesthesiology. We hear stories about this all the time. Statistical re uh, examinations of people having cardiac arrest show it's a real effect. And um, uh, the near-death experience is something that really needs to be studied. When somebody's gone through a cardiac arrest, when they've technically gone beyond the threshold of death, we have a situation where whether we like it or not, the brain shuts down. So now you can study the mind, consciousness, the psyche, the soul, the self, whatever you want to call it, in a clinical context where the brain has been switched off. Now, of course, we would expect there to be no consciousness present when the brain has shut down. That would be common sense. However, over the last few decades, thousands if not millions of people from all over the world have anecdotally reported being conscious, being aware, having memory, being able to see things and recalling in precise detail what doctors and nurses were doing, conversations, clothing, etc. Except they're recalling things from a period when they, their brain had flatlined, they had gone beyond the threshold of death. The most provocative evidence for heaven from near-death experiences seems to me to be cases where people come back from near-death experiences and they have information there's no way they could have had if they had just had a physical experience while on an operating table. For example, some people come back and they're able to recount conversations that their relatives have had five blocks away from the hospital. It probably is also this issue of religion and science. People think that anything that actually challenges our materialist worldview is somehow religious in nature and therefore is also suspect because that is non-scientific. Rather mm. than saying maybe some of these phenomena are actually part of our reality system and we just need to expand beyond materialism to include consciousness. Mm -hmm. And it's not that it becomes <laughs> religious, but it simply is including phenomena that are actually out there and observed by mm -hmm. scientists. I would really love to explore these near-death experiences in much more detail because there is a whole ocean of research and mind-blowingly incredible stories around this phenomenon, but I will say that for a future video. Suffice it to say here that a new scientific paradigm is emerging around the study of consciousness where the essence of what we are is understood to be non-local, which means that consciousness is not contained in this body. It's beyond this human lifetime and ultimately beyond the physical universe altogether. The idea of non-local consciousness is not very popular within mainstream science, at least not yet. Uh, we believe that eventually it will be. In fact, we believe that it's the future of science. It's not just about consciousness, but about the physical world, that there are elements that are non-local. We know that from quantum mechanics, but we think it's much bigger than the way that mainstream science is thinking about right now. What do we do with that idea? Well, the first thing that you notice is you, you go back through the history of the esoteric traditions, all the way back to shamanism, and that is the perennial philosophy. It is codified in, in, in basically two forms. One is consciousness is fundamental, and consciousness comes before space and time. That, that's like the most pithy way you can shove together 50,000 years of esoteric lore. I think that in the next decades, um, quantum physics with the 
uh, knowledge of structure within the brain is going to take us on the verge of, of a reconciliation of spirituality and science that's never been experienced before, and it's going to be really amazing. It's as if the teachings of the ancient mystics and the teachings of the modern physicists, uh, primarily, I suppose, Western, have come together. Yes. It has come together in, a, in such a fashion that it is promising new children, new babies to be born out of this new paradigm. Mm -hmm. It's truly a new paradigm because we are recognizing that consciousness is the ground of being and matter, mind, all these things are possibilities within consciousness. Mm -hmm. And in this way, our most advanced sciences are just starting to catch up to what mystics and spiritually awakened beings have been teaching for thousands of years. The deeper that we delve into the mysteries of consciousness, the more that the line between science and spirituality will be blurred, which inescapably points us to a much more spiritual understanding of the universe, the cosmos, and existence itself. Science is evolving into a new paradigm, and with it, so is all of humanity. This is the Great Awakening. It is unfolding before our very eyes, and it is my pleasure and my honor to share it with you.